In 1998, Lester Band the Charmers released an album called Dark Love. It was an album full of edgy pop songs with insightful lyrics, full of lush, lush string sounds. The album did really well at the time, got good reviews from press and peers alike, but unfortunately it stalled there. Our aim is to give the album a new platform and a fresh lease of life. And with us today, we have two of the band members, Andy Sharman and Jeff Chandler, to chew the fat over the making of the album. So let's play Dark Love. So what were the circumstances that led up to the recording of the album? Um, well, when me and Jeff got together, but basically uh, I used to be in a band called uh, Use Big Massive, and Jeff Jeff's in a band called This You Bis. And it's like mutual respect club, we both were, and we, need, we needed somewhere to live, didn't we? So we got a shared house, and uh, Jeff had a recording set up, and... Uh, I just... think we've been down the pub on dinner time, composed this song and recorded it. Recorded another one, another one. It was very, very okay. I mean, we didn't really make, turn out to actually start a band, no, per se, did no. we? We were just a uh, happy accident. Mm. And and both bands were breaking up at the same time. So we just carried on doing the, what became the Charmers. It's like a happy accident, really. Yeah. So you were a gigging band as well. You, you were doing gigs. Yeah, we, we, we started off. off with a tape machine, just, just a quarter inch, because we used to do all like, it was very kind of like 50s sort of uh, Larry Pond's kind of, uh, I, was, I was heavily into Adam Faith, if you can be heavily into Adam Faith <laughs> at the time. Deep into Adam. <laughs> yeah, I was, de I was deep into Adam. <laughs> And, uh, and we, used to, we used to do all this kind of like cheesy backing. The um, problem was that the backing tracks, the machine used to take about an hour to warm up, the flywheel to get going. So we were never late for a gig, were we? Because we no. had to spin the spindle to get the machine up to warm speed. And I think that got a bit tiresome. So we got Alan on the bass, didn't we? And then a bit later we got Chris on the drums. And became a... And, uh, and I don't know, if it's, I don't think we actually set out to make an album. It's just a natural progression, but we did. By that time, I think we had a, a big collection of songs, and this they certain songs that kind of fitted into this, into the dark love sort of theme, the love and loss, general misery sort of theme. What we'd like to do, uh, if that's okay with you, is just highlight a few of the tracks. Yeah, um, yeah. First track is well, take it as it comes. The first track on the album, the law according to Steve. Um, it's obviously about a guy who's worried about a rival making moves on his girl. Um, I will read a classic line from it if you don't mind. Contains the classic lines, does he want him for yourself? He's had a moustache and you never can tell. Now Steve, he was a real guy apparently. Yeah, I, I, all my songs are, they, they are, they are based on, on sort of true events, but uh, you know, you, you have po poetic license. Because, you know, I've got my face punched into the truth, like the, the amount of character assassinations I've done. People don't actually know, you know, because I'm a coward. But, uh, yeah, Steve, it's just basically uh, general bad advice that men give each other. It's that sort of blokey thing. It's not It's not the not the right answer, just like, tell it to bollocks. So there is a Steve walking around somewhere, right? There's millions of Steves walking around <laughs> somewhere. And uh, you can normally tell because they're dragging the knuckles. Yeah. <laughs> Second track, Feel Better. Um, now, this reminded me, personally, of a string-driven pop 60s anthem. Um, the string sounds are brilliant. Can you just explain how you actually got to that string sound? Well, 
both big fans of like um, Norrie Paramore and like you know as you say you like, yeah. like Glenn Campbell yeah any of these uh, 60s 70s um, singers you'd see on the television with these orchestral accompaniments it was just kind of recreating that really um, we never set out to make it a big 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 sound but it's one of those things you get a bit of a string part I think about a few trumpets and about flutes now then you can't stop going. And then you get a bit over the top. A bit rude. Really yeah. Too, but and so Jeff, Jeff is, he is classically trained. He is so. And it was you know, mainly Jeff. Yeah, mainly, put yeah. Put working in. Yeah. I, I may have owned one or a few bits yeah. out here. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it, yeah, it's mainly Jeff. Very good at counterpoint. And the problem was always was Andy would have a definite idea about how he wanted the song to sound. And I'd go to town after rehearsals and start putting more and more on and thinking, this sounds great. But fully expecting Andy to say, that's not how it's supposed to go, Jeff. That's not how I heard it. And I would sulk, you know, or cry. I just like the attention. <laughs> you can't say that. I caught that. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say that, can you? You just like... You did. <laughs> it's there. No, no, no. Scrub, fucking scrub, scrub, record, scrub, like. scrub that. I'm <clears> fucking <throat> track uh, lads mad about the girl now for me this wouldn't be out of place on a Walker Brothers album is there a backstory to this track at all the backstory is it was a probably three or four year old song that I'd done in this Yabis um, and Andy had suggested putting in on Dark Love so I just thought it fitted perfectly well with the rest of the song did fit. I didn't think it would it was quite a light fast song when Yabs did it but we slowed yeah. it down and put the orchestration on and it seems to fit the theme really well. Oh, wait, were, were there many songs that you incorporated into the, the actual track list of the album from your previous incarnation? No, no, because no, no, so, so, you know, songs didn't tend to hang around much. We, mm. we, we had a very fast turnover, really. And the songs we were doing previous to Dark Love were, I think, a completely different genre, really, weren't yeah, they? We, they were we, went, we, we and... went from Adam Faith and Helen Shapiro yeah. Like Larry Barnes to the kind of Applejack sort of 60s beat driven but it was quite brutal you know we, we wanted to get that sort of like nasty speeding not that we were a pair of pill heads speed, <laughs> speed induced kind of Hamburg vibe weren't we yeah. so it was, it was like Applejacks on on, uh, on crack mm. that, that, that's what it was like <laughs> exactly yeah. like that yeah it, it was, was. Dun, 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 yeah. Dun, 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 dun. and this collection of songs I think were the first slower ones we did and you, yeah. you know, you play like the slow one, you think, great. I think we're tired mm. ourselves out, haven't yeah. we? So uh, let, let's slow down and get a we're bit... We're spent four, so... Get a mm. bit, <laughs> we were spent, get a bit Scott Walker on it, yeah.
Next track we're going to look at, lads, is Be Mine, um, which is a plaintive love song with a rolling bass line. Uh, I wanted just to uh, see how did you actually achieve the vocal clarity with everything that was going on in the tracks, with the strings and everything else, but the vocals are very clear. How did you...? Well, the studio we were using was uh, Yellow Belly Studio at the top of Welford Road in Leicester. And uh, basically, it had a good, really, it had a very good vocal isolation booth and uh, headphones and a quality singer. You, you need a good singer with proper diction. I sing a lot better than I talk because I sound like a mumbling git from Leicester. But uh, it don't get the sap out. <laughs> it don't it, it don't transfer o over to the vocal sound at all. Does it not? Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've done a, another version of this at the cabin in uh, Coventry. We didn't quite work out as well as this. Version. No, I we did thought, it, so we ended because up because it was this. quite expensive recording there. Yeah. So I think we kind of ran out of time. So we used the uh, on that very machine that that eight track version. Yeah, fifty eight. And a, 58. Was it and 58? a S SM fifty eight. Yeah, a sure SM58. The best. That's my choice for microphone. The recording you did at Cabin in Coventry, what, what made you use that studio? Were you recommended? Uh, yeah, we, we, we heard about the Cabin studio because um, I heard something that my, a friend of mine, Daz, who was in a band called Storyville, had recorded there with a guy called Paul Sampson, who uh, he, did, uh, he had a big hit with the Primitives, uh, Crash. And uh, I thought it was fantastic. And um, okay, we were going for it, weren't we, kid? The, the primary reason we recorded there was to, to get a, a professional sounding uh, set of songs that we could send off to companies. Because that was twenty four track, did you say? It was. It was the full full Monte. Yeah. So you they, they used distance micing, all all the works and stuff like that. Paul, Paul was brilliant, and yeah. he ended up with a really lots good, lots good ideas, didn't, yeah. didn't he, as well, production wise. My shoulder, my shoulder's crying. We always just get this wrong live, don't we? I mean, yeah, we, we did, used to put yeah. it on the guitar, yeah. use, do. Yeah, yeah do. we did, yeah. Just play, play the fucking Go on, yeah. yeah. Two, okay. Two, four. Four. Next track we're going to look at is Moonlust. Now, you've got to explain what Moonlust means. Well, Moonlust, I mean, you know, uh, apparently uh, when when there is a full moon, people go potty. They do, you know what I mean? Uh, is it sort of some sort of tidal thing on the fluid on your brain? I mean, where I live, the bus stops, all made of glass, well done Leicester Council, and they get kicked to bits, smashed to bits when, uh, when there's a full moon out. And uh, it's just an extension of that. The, the drum sound, how did you get to record the drums? Did you record the original tracks to a click track? The drums, we'd program the drums up. We, 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 just, we, them, we, we, we? we basically used to demo the songs, and um, obviously, because to save time, you'd work out all the arrangements before you went in. And uh, there'd be a, on a sympathy track, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, triggering it off U20. Um, and basically, the, the drum sound was in Yellow Belly's studio in a cubicle about four before 
Um, and that was it. There's nothing special. And our drummer Chris, it. who just played live to a click, which was used to anyway, because we used to play live to mm. a click anyway. Which is brilliant for a drummer to do that, because a lot of drummers are not really happy about playing. No, to a, lot, a lot of drummers won't do it. Yeah. yeah. A lot of drummers can't do it. No. Yeah. No. Yeah, it is a, an art. Isn't but it? no, he's very good at that. Yeah. So I think initially what we're trying to do was kind of a Giorgio Moroder sort of kind of. I don't think we were actually playing on the beginning, but we can play it. Like yeah, the, yeah. Like the synthesizer, the synthesizer, okay. the, the spaceship on there. to the title track of the album dark love now it is a dark track with dark undertones to it now the lyrics i've got to just ask you the question is if there is a lyric about tipping water on your girlfriend's head uh in bed um yeah I mean, no no it's a very sinister song it, it's not autobiogra uh, autobiographical at all but it definitely is about it's about somebody i knew and i think that i that had quite a rough time and uh you know Love can be dark, it can be light, but my God, that was fucking dark. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's like, there's, there's like bad times and there's like the, the worst of times, right. even like Dickens' worst How of times. How did it gravitate to the point that you start dripping water? And well, you, 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 I don't know. So, so, you just try and put yourself in other people's positions. That's what you try and do. And like, if you're sitting there like kind of mourning like, the terrible shit somebody's been through. I just like had a bit of water. Dark love, a modern day tragedy in D. Three, four.
final question, lads. How does it feel to you for us to be resurrecting this album? It has been a few years since it uh, came out originally. I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm really glad. I mean, I was definitely up for the idea because th these things are lost. I, I don't think anyone's got a copy of it. Have you got a copy of it? Maybe. No. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I've, I've really enjoyed listening to it again with fresh ears because it's been eight, 18 years and sometimes, it's nice, sometimes it's nice yeah. to go back yeah. over all we, were, yeah. we weren't, we're never precious about anything were we just bang them out we did that much stuff it's just like bang it out yeah. Yeah. I think once we've done this we're on the next album oh yeah no just, just things, just things constantly overlap mm. but uh, no it's I've, I've, that's I've, a good I've, thing thank, thank you for the opportunity guys oh, it's a pleasure yeah. well what about um Playing now, Andy. I know you. You're in a band. Jeff, are you still playing? No, I'm still song? playing. You're teaching, aren't you? I'm teaching. Teaching classical. Playing my own things. Very but not, good. Not gigging. And obviously, yeah. you, you've got your band production. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Don't, don't, that, that, we're, we're getting harsher by the day. You know what I mean? It's good. Enjoying it. Getting deafer as well. Mm.